All right, what's going on, y'all? Let's go ahead and do three, two. It says, for the bar assemblage, uh, determine the nodal displacements, the forces in each element, and the reactions using the direct stiffness method. So we'll go ahead and do this problem, um, and we will verify them. I'll teach you how to verify them in case you don't know yet. But if you've been watching the spring matrices problems, it's the same thing, um, nothing too crazy, just different stiffness matrix. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's start this problem off by writing our knowns. So just by looking at the schematic, right, there's no force at node two. So force two X is zero. Um, at node three, there's a negative 10,000, right? Because this is our positive X direction. Uh, this is element one, element two, right? Bar one, bar two. Uh, so at node three, there's a negative 10,000 and the reason I'm doing 10,000 and not kilonewtons is because they give us E in terms of GPA so that's 10 to the 9 newton per meter squared area is already in meter squared so um, I'm gonna just keep everything in newtons and meters if this was kilopascals I guess you would have just kept them in kilonewtons but you could get confused I like to just bring them down I like to just bring them down all the way to the simplest term newtons and meters but again, that depends for every problem. That's a, uh, um, all right. So at F1X, we don't know the force. So we're gonna have to find that one. Um, U1 will never move, right? No matter how much force you apply at the nodes, it's fixed. Um, they give us E and A, I won't write those down, but cool, we could go ahead and get started with the, with the equation. So again, this is the equation we're trying to get for springs. It's force is equal to kx for this, um, uh, for beams, bar assemblages, it's the play equation from strength of material. So it's force is equal to E A over L times delta. Delta's displacement, F is your force. This is your stiffness matrix right here. So we're looking for E A L. All right. So there's three nodes, right? So that means we're gonna have three force reactions, force one, force two, and force three. Um, we're gonna set it equal to EA, right? Um, EA over L, that's the stiffness matrix. But since it's all the same, right? There's only one modulus of elasticity, one area or cross-sectional area. And the length is the same for both of them. I'm gonna go ahead and factor it out um of the matrix so we won't have to write it uh a lot e a over l i'm gonna give some space because i'm gonna erase this later to plug in the real numbers so i'll probably do the start the matrix right here okay um this is nodes one two and three it's gonna be a three by three right because right? we got three nodes so it's one two and three Let's go ahead and put it right there. Um, and then the vector for displacement. U1, U2, and U3. Okay. All right, um, just FYI, let's go ahead and get the number for EAL. Um, EA over L will equal, when you multiply 210 GPA, so it's 210 times 10 to the nine, times four times 10 to the negative four, you will get 840, right? Two 10 times four. And then when you multiply 10 to the nine times 10 to the negative four, you will get 10 to the fifth. L is one, so it doesn't matter. Um, we will have 840 times 10 to the fifth. That's what that term is equal to. So, um, you know, just like you would for a regular spring matrix, um, you know how when you had a spring here, it's between nodes two and one, so two, one, two, one, you'll have these four slots and it'll be K, negative K, negative K, K. What's well, the same thing? Now we're gonna have EAL, negative EAL, negative EAL, and EAL, but we already factored out EAL, so you'll just have one, negative one, negative one, and one. For the first element. Now the second element is between nodes two and three. So two, three, two, three. It's this slot, this slot, this slot, and this slot. 
and you're gonna do the same thing, right? EAL, but we already factored it out, so we're gonna put one, negative one, negative one, and one. So this is two, obviously. Let's go ahead and add this, it's two. We could go ahead and start plugging in the boundary conditions, this is zero, zero, nothing happened there. Um, U1 is fixed, right, we already determined, so U1 is fixed, this is gonna be zero. Um, at force two, right, um, there's no force at two, that's what I meant, so this is zero, and we know the force at three, that is positive 10,000, okay? So this is 10,000, zero, and zero. And if you haven't been watching the other videos, you know you're doing something right. Where, um, when, you know at node one, you either know force or displacement. Um, same for every other node, right? One, two, and three, you either know force or displacement. In this case, at nodes one, we don't know force, but we know displacement. At nodes two and three, we know force, right? Zero and 10,000, and we don't know displacement. So that means we're doing something right. Um, I'm gonna erase this EAL. And this is 840 times 10 to the five, okay? I'm just plugging in this. All right, so we could go ahead and keep going. Let's get the equations going. So it's F1X, right? And don't forget the EAL. So it's 840 times 10 to the fifth, and then open parentheses, and then you start adding all the terms, just like you would for a spring matrix. So in this case, it's one times zero, negative one times U2, plus zero times U3. So it's just negative U2. Next one, zero is equal to, again, 840 times 10 to the fifth. Let's do that one. It's negative one times zero plus two times U2 minus, well, it's, it's plus, right? But negative one times U3, it's minus U3. Finally, the last one, let's go ahead and do that. 840 times 10 to the fifth. That one is negative one times U2. So it's negative U2 plus U3. All right, so the trick to these, again, I'll repeat them every single time. You wanna stay away from the equations that have force um, unknowns. So in this case, equation one, we don't know force. So let's stay away from equation one. We know force is here, so let's stick with these two equations. We have two equations. Two unknowns, right? U2 and U3. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the second equation just because just by looking at it, it's easier, right? Divide both sides by 840, that cancels out. Divide both sides by 10 to the fifth, they cancel out because it's equal to zero. So that means from equation two, we see that two U2 is equal to U3, right? Because this one away and move U3 to the other side. That's pretty much it. That's a uh, relationship right there um step four now we use equation three and you use the relationship we just found we plug it into the top right here all right so equation three is 10,000 is equal to 840 times 10 to the fifth oh hold on hold on this is negative 10,000 okay just FYI, negative 10,000. Open that up. This is negative and this is negative. Okay, forgot that. It's going in the negative X direction, but we're good. Um, Plug in the U2s, right, whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in U3 because I don't have to divide by two if I plug in U2. So I'll keep it negative U2 plus u3 u3 is equal to 2 u2 so 2 u2 boom all right this is just algebra right here right divide this side by 840 and then divided by a hundred thousand so negative ten thousand real trick there's four zeros so that's ten to the four negative so it's negative one times ten to the four divided by ten to the five it's negative one 
over 10, that's going to be negative 0 0.1, right? And then you divide that by day 40, um, you will get negative 1.191 times 10 to the negative 4, right? Yeah, uh, is equal to u2, right? Because 2u2 minus u2, that's just u2. And boom, just like that, we have our four first answer. And does that make sense? Not the number itself, but the sign. If you're pushing with 10,000 force going to the left, this node is gonna move somewhere here, and node two is gonna move somewhere here, right? So yeah, negative direction, that makes sense. Um, step five, now we're gonna use U2 to solve for U3. Just multiply this number by two. So that means U3 is equal to negative 2.381 times 10 to the negative four. And this is in meters, okay, meters. Boom, that's the second answer. So now that we have all displacements, we could go ahead and find the forces. Step six, um, let's use U2 to find F1x. So if you plug in this U2, so here's the trick, look, be careful. This is a negative U2 and U2 is already negative. So your final force should be positive. Okay, just make sure um, you don't get confused there. So F1x is equal to, if you do the math, you will get close to 10,000. I think it's like 9996, but we're gonna go ahead and round up. And that force is always going to the right. And that's the answer. So does that make sense now? Yeah, it does, right? If you're pushing with 10,000 to the left, nothing's happening here. That means this one is pushing 10,000 to the right, 10 kilonewtons, right? <clears throat> so yeah, this answer really does make sense. Um, we'll just keep going, right? Step seven. So the nodes make sense in terms of direction, forces make sense in terms of direction and value because the system's in equilibrium. So step seven, we gotta find the forces in each element, the local element forces. So first element element means beam right this is just a beam it's between nodes one and two so it's f one x f two x is equal to now sometimes the problems will say find the forces i mean the the stresses not the forces in each element and when you find the stresses you're supposed to use e over l in this case because it's forces we're going to use ea over L, okay? So just keep that in mind. It could say forces or stresses. But it kind of makes sense, right? If you want to find a stress, and this is a force vector, you just divide it by the area. Divide both sides by A. This will give you stress, and this will just be E over L, okay? So well, the first element, it's one, negative one, negative one, one. And that is multiplied by the displacement. So it's U1 and U2, right? Because it's between nodes one and two. So let's go ahead and put U2 first because it's a bigger number. Negative 1.191 times 10 to the negative four. And this is zero, U1 is zero. So let's go ahead and do the math. F1x is equal to EAL, which is 840 times 10 to the fifth. But forget about that for now. So it's one times zero, zero. Negative one times this, negative 1.191. That is a positive 1.191, right? But 10 to the fifth times 10 to the fourth, negative four, that is just 10. So this is now 10.91, okay? Positive 10.91 because it was a negative. Now that positive 10.91 is multiplied by 840 you should get a nice 10,000 newtons going to the right. Again, if you want me to just do it real quick, it's 840 times 10 to the fifth times a positive 1.191. So it's 1.191 times 840. Now 10 to the fifth times 10 to the negative fourth, that's just 10 times 10. That's a nice 10,000, 10,000. Okay, it's just rounding error. Um, 
Similarly for F2X, the only thing that changes, so I love about local elements, forces, right? The only thing that changes is the direction. So all numbers are the same, except this is now a positive one, and this will stay negative. So it's negative 10,000. Newtons to the right. So we got that one. Now, if I went a little too fast here, don't worry, the next one I'll go, I'll write it all out, just so you could see it. But the next one is between nodes two and three. So you're gonna have force two X, force 3x that is equal to eal which is just i'll just write eal okay <clears throat> it's one negative one negative one one and this won't always be the case in this case just because the elasticity the area and the length are the same that's the reason we could do all this but sometimes this number might be diff might be uh, different for for each beam and then finally, displacement vector U2 is negative 1.191 times 10 to the negative four. Then the other one is negative 2.381 times 10 to the negative four. All right, so let's do F2X. F2X is equal to 840 times 10 to the fifth, right? That's EA over L. I'm going to put parentheses around this. Then finally, the other one. It's 1 times this. So it's negative 1.191 times 10 to the negative 4. You always add it plus, in this case, it's going to be parentheses negative 1 times negative 2.381. That is 2.381 times 10 to the negative 4. Close parentheses, close parentheses. Okay. Now do the math, you will get F2X of element two, is of element one, element one. <clears throat> That's gonna give you positive 10,000 Newtons going to the right. Do the same thing for F3X. The only thing that changes for F3X is now, it's 840, the same thing, times 10 to the fifth. Now one, negative one times negative 1.191, this is positive now. Then this would be negative one times negative 2.381. So the only thing that's gonna change is the, the sign, negative 10,000 now, Newtons to the right. Now don't just take my word for it. Let's go ahead and verify these numbers. Um, okay, so. I've always had trouble explaining how to verify these, but I hope it makes sense. So you have your original forces, right? You have your big F1, big F2, big F3. Now to verify these, you just add all the numbers that's kind of uh, going on at each node, okay? So in this case, to find F1X, we determined it was positive 10,000, okay? So that means when you add all the little F1Xs for every single element, you should get positive 10,000. So let's go ahead and do that. There's an F1X here. This is F2. No, no, no. It's just one. It's positive 10,000 to the right. Boom. F1 is verified. Okay. Force 2 is zero. So that means when you add all the force 2s of the local elements, of the elements, right, you should get zero. So F2X here, F2X here. Negative 10,000 plus 10,000, that is zero. Boom, that's verified. At node three, the force was negative 10,000. Here we only have one F3X, it's this one right here, negative 10,000. Cool, so this answer is verified, this problem is good to go, and hope you understood it.